Let's talk about the stress energy tensor. Now you may ask why all of a sudden we have we are talking about stress energy tensor. Well, we have been talking about geometry and um, like Riemann, ten Riemann tensor and Ricci tensor. The reason I'm talk want to talk about stress energy tensor is the fact that we're actually gathering all our components to write uh, Einstein's equation, and the stress energy tensor plays an important role uh, in the Einstein equation. This is the source term actually. So. Um, to, uh, to understand what really stress energy tensor is, we know that if we have a vector, the corresponding thing in a four dimensional space is called a four vector. For example, we know that if we have a momenta vector, then the corresponding four vector is E over C, Px, Py, Pz. Now, stretch energy tensor is actually a four dimensional counterpart of something called Cauchy stress tensor. So let's talk about first of all Cauchy stress tensor which is let me just put T Well, we are often encounter this tensor in mechanics, solid mechanics, things like that. Now, uh, the diagonal components are called the pressure terms, and the off diagonal term, uh, com uh, terms are called the shear stress terms. So, if you have some guy, some object under pressure or shearing, and you define a coordinate system, you can certainly write how say some well, some volume element is experiencing uh, or uh, let's say on a surface, on a surface of volume element what are the different pressures and shearing stress, um, uh, let's say inside or outside the plane is pressure and shearing stress can be on the surface in the one in x direction or z direction. Now if you do a rotation you know that these components will mix, will give a different value, the pressures will change and the, and, um, uh, and the shearing stress will change. Well, the values will change doesn't mean the physics will change. Uh, so this is a way of uh, the stress, uh, Cauchy stress and strength is nothing but tells about the stresses and pressure uh, on an object or on a system with a defined x, y and z axis. Now what is the four dimensional counterpart of that? The four dimensional counterpart for this is actually just t0,0, t0,1, t0,2, t0,3 and t1,0, t2,0, t3,0, t1,1, t1,2, t1,3, t2,1, t2,2 and t2,3 T31, T32, T33. Now you see this is actually a symmetric tensor. The reason it's a symmetric tensor is because uh, if you have a, a, an element, a surface element, then we expect that Txy and Tyx, where now I'm labeling 1, 2 as xyx, should be same. Otherwise, there it will be something called torsion. We want a torsion free system. So basically, gravity is a torsion free theory. There's no torsion. Uh, so that's true with uh, Cauchy stress tensor and also true with the stress energy tensor. Now, this is a, an ex a four dimensional counterpart. Uh, and uh, why it's four dimensional is because basically you know that. Um, this guy, the, the three, uh, a vector actually uh, stays the same but if you change the coordinate system these px and py and pz they mix and match but uh, for four dimensional the rotation uh, the coordinate the, the rotation which is a coordinate transform actually can be understood as the Lorentz transformation. The Lorentz transformation is nothing but a sort of a rotation. So in four dimension e over z px py Pz, if you do a rotation or a Lorentz transform, basically the new components will be nothing but 
uh, things like like here pressure becomes shear and shear becomes pressure similarly same for here the, the momentum term may con start contributing to energy term and so on so basically it's just uh, the new the new components will be a linear combination of the old components and which is going to hold be true for Lorentz transformation similarly here um, you know that if you have some things sitting some ball sitting then it has does not have momentum but if you do a Lorentz transformation to a moving frame you know it will start develop uh, a momentum so and also its energy density will change you know because it's going to shrink uh, because you know that moving moving objects moving objects actually uh, there's a there's a length contraction so because of length contraction the energy density of this ball is going to change and sim so what happens anything which was just a mass actually just energy density well actually mass and energy density will become actually uh, mass plus momenta um, if you do a Lorentz transformation similarly if you have uh, pressure and shearing stress acting then they will also ch change uh, if you do a Lorentz transformation so this is a four-dimensional case um, so you can always have, have you can always do a Lorentz transformation and change one component to other, and um, all of them actually. Um, le so let me be precise actually here. What is actually this? This is actually T i j is nothing but flux of um, ith component of momenta or momenta vector or vector you can say momentum vector across a surface with constant x let's call this alpha and beta because i and j we use for three dimension case so let's call this alpha beta. This is the definition. So um, uh, this is T11 is nothing but flux of um, or the momentum in the x direction across um, the surface. So if you have let's say something like this x, y and z. So if you have a surface in the yz plane then stress or pressure in this direction along the x direction is nothing but T11. So you see so it's pointing in the x direction and also the surface is, you see is defined by the perpendicular to it and x axis is perpendicular to the surface which lies in the yz axis. So these are pressure terms T11. Similarly you can have shearing terms. Now this is energy density and this is momentum density. How come that is density when we are talking about flux? Now you see, uh, we know that T0, um, so, so what is happening here is this. Um, here, the flux is in the x direction because this is 1. Let's call 1 as x and 2 as y and 3 as z. We know 0 is T. So basically, T00 is actually the, the, um, uh, the T0, we know that actually moment alpha the alpha component of momenta we know is energy a, a zeroth component of energy of momenta is energy you see that this is energy the zeroth component the flux across x0 the flux across x0 means um, the flux across constant time surface so the flux across constant time surface basically means that time is not changing as if time is not changing we are basically keeping um, um, x um, when you say flux we actually define a, a, a unit surface and you define a unit surface and then across the unit surface whatever is passing through this unit surface is the flux so when you have time equals constant and you define a unit surface uh, then actually it becomes density because then you take the third dimension also as unit and then this becomes density so t10 or t001 is nothing but the first component of momenta which is um, um, just the momenta in the x direction um, across t across um, constant time surface and 
I mean, as, as discussed here, constant time surface is nothing but density. So T01 is nothing but momentum density in the x direction. T02 is nothing but momentum density in the y direction. T03 is nothing but momentum density in the z direction. And because it's a symmetrical tensor, T10 is nothing but T01 and so on. Now this, vec um, this uh, tensor plays an important role because this actually uh, is the source of space-time curvature. So it was quick, Einstein quickly realized that stress energy tensor should be the source of um, uh, curvature because we know that mass curves space-time curvature. Now mass itself, you know, it's an in incomplete term. Uh, is um, Gravity is a tensor theory. And uh, well, in Newtonian mechanics, we know that mass produces potential, but in in general relativity, um, uh, where we know that things can uh, that one aspect of something can become a different aspect if you do a Lorentz transformation, then it's just one scalar is not going to do, and that's why this sort of completely is a representation of whatever can really curve the surface, uh, which includes stresses and pressure and momentum, uh, momentum density and energy density. And this is nothing but this for Einstein realized that this should be the source term. Source term means something which is curving the space-time curvature. So source term for stress, energy, oh, I'm sorry for space-time curvature. Okay, there's a good thing about this. Um, we, it satisfies, it remains conserved. This is satisfied. Same as we know that momentum remains satisfied, same as momenta which remains four momenta or four momenta which remains uh, conserved if there are no external forces. Similarly, this guy also remains conserved like this. Um, also, let's say you have some T mu nu and um, you do a Lorentz transformation and you get T prime mu nu. So this guy was producing some curvature. And this new transformation, if it's Lorentz transformation, will produce the curvature in the new frame. These two curvature, uh, basically in the absolute sense, will be the same if the transformation is nothing but um, Lorentz transformation. Or um, okay, um, so the basic reason why I in introduced stress energy tensor was just to stress on the point that. It was Einstein quickly realized the fact that the stress energy tensor should be something that should be used as a source term for uh, space.